Uh, the topic today is unleash the power of farm QA tasks, and I will help you unleash that power. So uh, with that said, the agenda is we're going to walk through how you can set up tasks in farm QA, assign them to individuals, and then those individuals can complete those tasks. The, the value in that is in dispatching a team, being efficient and making sure you don't miss known tasks or, or things that needed to get done. And also the paper trail so you can track to say if something gets missed, kind of where in that loop or the process did things fall through the cracks or if everything gets completed as it should, you can then see the, tra the trail of who completed those things and did them on what days. Um, so with that, there's a, a lot of different use cases we're going to walk through and excuse me. And so with that, we've have tasks around planting and harvesting, but uh, a value, let's say to our agronomy customers would be they can create planting and harvesting tasks and actually assign those to directly to the growers. The value to that is when the grower completes those tasks, the, the planting information as far as the dates, the varieties, get pushed back to the agronomist as well. And so that one's really interesting to us because we see it as a, an efficient method for communication between the agronomist and the grower and getting the information that's needed for that agronomist to, to, to do the job well. Uh, we also have sp spray dispatching. So when our agronomist writes a recommendation, that recommendation can get pushed out to a user who may be a custom applicator or direct to the grower who does their own spraying. We'll talk through how this can be used for scouting with a team, and that's more around dispatching of scouts, but a key component or difference there is we also have review tasks, meaning that as a, a junior scout, if you submit a report, it can be automatically pushed to a, a head agronomist to review that before it actually gets out to the growers. Soil sampling, we've got some built-in unique functionality around our sampling tasks, and that's around defining grids, assigning sampling points, scanning barcodes, which we'll briefly talk through. And then uh, with how customizable this can be, you can use it for general farm tasks if you're a large farm looking to manage a team there. But there's also a ton of use cases that we're not going to touch on because of how customizable it is. But hopefully the way I walk through it, it will showcase how you can just take and run with this feature and use it to, to meet your needs. So with that said, I'm going to jump into the product. And again, please just put any questions in the chat as those come up and we will address them. So hopefully you are seeing my screen, which should be a map view of what we call Farm QA Controller, which is our, our web interface. And where I will direct the, the attention to start with here is the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a work tab. Now, if you're watching this and you do not see the work tab, this is an add-on feature. What I would say is that if you want to trial Farm QA tasks, just reach out to us directly and we can give you free trial period on tasks if you want to evaluate if this brings value to your company or not. So don't hesitate to do that. Uh, additionally, through our free trial, if you download our app, this is turned on in that free trial mode as well. So I have now clicked on the work tab and you see three main tabs in the top left, the task list, this is where you see all of the, the created tasks. The daily task view is a calendar. It's the same data that I showed in the list view. It just happens to be in a calendar view within this particular tab. And then the task types. And the task types is actually where we're going to start today. So the task types are the categories of tasks that you have within your Farm QA account. And you can create new tasks. And so that's what we'll do here. You can see I have a handful of tasks created but there's a few that I intentionally left out or I would like to add. And so I'll do that using the plus button in the bottom left-hand corner. And if I click on that, you can see I have the opportunity to type in a task name. So in this case, you can see I have grid sampling, zone sampling as different categories, but perhaps I also do composite sampling so I can enter that in, you know, call it sampling. I can choose a category, which in this case, I'll make it soil sampling and I can choose an icon. So we have a list of several canned icons and you can reuse multiple of the same ones across different task types or intentionally pick unique ones. Um, but let's say I, I do choose the shovel in this case. I can then input a description. So I could say this is for a single sample collection. 
And I can also put instructions. The difference here, and this is a common question, the description really only exists uh, on this screen and is for yourself when saying, why did I set up this category? You can have that as a more or less a reminder. Instructions get kind of propagated out with those tasks. And so if you want to put something in here to say, um, make sure to always take at least 10 samples and mix in a bucket. So now whenever I create a new task for composite sampling, these instructions will be pushed into the task and made visible to that sample collector. So that, that's how the, the functionality works. We'll create another one. In this case, we'll call it, uh, let's just say it's a scouting related task, but it's specific to doing yield estimates. And in this case, I'll choose a category of scouting. I'm gonna choose an icon. We'll go with the binoculars and instructions here for yield estimates, we will say, make sure to measure roll width or something like that. One other thing to point out on this view, we do have the ability once you assign tasks, you're completing tasks, you can see a map view of your progress. And that is where these colors come into play. So when it says no task pending, ready, in progress, completed, that is the status of any given task. And it will be what color we paint the field that's in that status. So for example, um, we'll show this in a little bit, but let's say your soil sampling and you have a list of 10 fields that are ready to be sampled. In, in this case, if you assign them a task, they're gonna be colored red. Now, if I tap on that little box, you can change the colors. So you could say, I want my fields that are ready to be in green and the ones that are completed, let's just say that those are supposed to be purple. So now on the top right, when I save this task, that will now be the, the map color that we paint those fields with the, the tasks that have those different status options. So with that, that's simply the setup side. And one thing I'll point out here before we move on, we have several canned, if you will, task categories. And as of right now, you do have to choose one of these options. In the future, we foresee ourselves putting in an other option, which is just kind of a catch-all. But a couple of these are, are unique in the way that we use them in the software and how you can create the task. And I specifically mentioned that around the apply task. Uh, a common question we get with the apply task is why can't I see that along with the other task when you go to create them? And it's because this one is has a special linkage to our recommendations. So you can only schedule an apply task based on a, a chemical recommendation. Same or similar concept for reviews. You can't, you can't just straight out create a review task on its own, but you can do that as part of a scouting report. And that is just that linkage of saying that junior scout tells the head agronomist to review what they've what they've written. So just note that. So moving on, we're going to create a few tasks. And so to do that, uh, the best way to do it is from the, the list view from the web, like I'm showing here. What I like to do is I on the top right of my list view, I group this by crops and that way it's it's restricted down or grouped in those segments. And then, as always, you can use the organizational or grower filters to view a particular grower or sub farm of theirs when you're creating these tasks. So in my case, I'm going to grab several barley fields. And after doing so, you can see in the very top menu bar, there is a schedule task option. And this is where you go to create the tasks. And as I expand out this view, you can see the task that I previously showed on the, the, the setup side, where the yield estimates I had just created, the composite is a new type as well. But note that you do not see apply task here and you do not see review tasks. That's because they uniquely live in different places in the, in the software. So for now, what we'll do is we're going to create several different types of tasks. And so uh, to start with, let's just do a, uh, we'll say a planting task. And in this case, the, the screen that you see here allows me to set start and finish dates. These are optional uh, and you can just do one or the other. So for example, if I want to say, uh, we should really get this planted at least by next, next Thursday. And priority wise, you can leave it as medium or set it as high or low. And then you can assign this to an individual. So this is your user list that exists in your account. 
different permissions can do certain things. And so uh, be be mindful of that as well as not if you're not seeing the users in this list, it may be because they're a free view only user, which cannot be assigned a task. Um, so keep that in mind. In this case, we're going to assign this to, to Benjamin. And then you can see this was that can text that I put in with my planting task. And so that automatically populates here, but I can add to it if I want and then save that task out. I just created three tasks with a, several clicks because I had multi selected fields here. So that's the process of creating tasks. A, a couple things that are unique is if I create a soil sampling task. So in this case, let's say I, I create a, uh, a grid soil sampling task. In this case, there's a, a, an additional screen as part of this process, and it's the ability to create those grids or assign points. And so in the interface I have here, I've chosen one of the two fields, 278, and in the top left, I can choose to use existing points, meaning this is where I collected last year, and I could choose to reuse those, or I could start fresh from a grid. So in this case, I'm gonna overlay a grid, I can set my density in the top right. So I could say two and a half acres, or I could update that to three, I could say 32, let's say two and a half acres. And then you can adjust the orientation and make sure it doesn't uh, overlay with some of the, the boundaries by moving it vertically or horizontally. You commit those changes, you click save, then you can do the same thing for your additional fields. So in this case, I'll quickly create a second two and a half acre grid and save that out. Now on this, the next screen, one additional step here as well, where you can set your sample depth. So let's say you want to do zero to six. Uh, let's actually say zero to 12 and 12 to 24. And then you can set again, start and finish by dates. We'll say middle of next week. And then we're going to assign this to, to Jim. And we're going to call this webinar. Great example. OK. So we'll save that out. And again, that was just to, to, to showcase the difference in the, this, the sampling task. In this case, a slightly different screen. What I'll show now is we, we have a handful of tasks created and they are assigned to different individuals. And so what we can do from this view is if we jump into the, the mobile side, the mobile view, uh, typically you land on that. The map view is maybe the default for users. But what I'll point out here is there is the the work tab down at the bottom and so if you click on the the work tab in this case actually let me see if i can zoom this in a little bit there you go so if you uh, click on the work tab this is where me as an individual i can see the tasks that are assigned to me so that's the screen task task assigned to me as an individual I'm currently logged in, not as my admin account, but as uh, Benjamin in this case, which is a, a lower level agronomist. And so I'm just seeing the tasks that are assigned to me with a date. A couple things to note here is you could search to say, okay, I'm right next to field 231. So just show me the task for that field. You can also search by a crop, search by a user if you're looking at viewing multiple users. And you can also filter by your, your grower tree here as well. A couple things that are maybe less obvious, but very helpful on the top right where it says finish by, that's actually a clickable button. So if I tap there, I can now see that this is sorted by finish by time. So what that means is the tasks that are most urgent bubble to the top. As I scroll to the bottom, those would be my, my later tasks that would be needing to be completed let's say end of this week, early next week. However, I can change that. So I could say sort by task priority and when, or sorry, task types. Now you can see my harvest task and my planting task, those all kind of grouped together. And so if I continue on, you can sort by priority. That's the low, medium, high, who it's assigned to. So this is more of an admin function. If you're, uh, you're, if you're kind of dispatching a team, you can see the the lit, the tasks that are grouped by who they're assigned to. Distance is a, a very valuable one in the sense that I need to do these tasks today, but I can be efficient with my route by looking at what tasks are closest to me at the current moment. And then you can uh, sort just by task ID. Usually that's more for kind of diagnosing uh, maybe an issue. So with that, those are a few of the filters of your task list. 
but getting into actually using this functionality. So if I tap on any given task, this is the, the basic task information. Note that at the top, you still see some basic field information and you can click the eye icon to, to expand out and some additional information. In this case, some things I might want to do is I can see the, the finish by date, more specifically, July 22nd. I can edit if this if I have the correct permissions. What the edit allows me to do is, let's say I'm nearing the end of the day and I've got three, four fields I know that I won't be able to complete. I can bump those into tomorrow, for example, and save that out. I can also do a couple additional things with the instructions and notes. So typically, like we said, those instructions would pre-populate if I had done that when that was set up. So the instructions are more so uh, directed at the person creating the task. And so I, I'll just kind of mock this up because it's, it's not here. But let's say um, check all four corners. So let's say that was from the head agronomist. And as a note, this would typically come from the person doing, in this case, the scouting task. And they could say, uh, I couldn't get to northwest corner because of um, moisture issues. So that could be another scenario for editing. So we'll save that out. And that's going to be tracked and flow through with the task. Uh, I would say the most common scenario here is actually to click this arrow which would bring you into the field detail itself. And in my case, I clicked on a scouting task. And so the action here is to simply come in here, start my scouting report. The overall field looks good. Maybe we saw some insect pressure. We'll input that data. But now as I submit this scouting report, it's going to auto close the ticket that I've selected, but I have the option to do two additional things. One is I can schedule a review task. And so this is where going back to, you didn't see the review task type in my list when I was in the field list view. It's because it's it's hard coded in, if you will, into a the submission process of a scouting report. So if I turn this on, it will auto create a follow-up task and assign it to the head agronomist or the person that created this task. And I can also schedule a, re a review, or I should say re return scouting task. So what I mean by that is if I turn this on, I'll clear out my default here. I can create a, a scouting task, but say I want to come back to this field, and you can choose a day, you can choose a time interval, let's say seven days. And as part of that, I can say check progress on cutworm damage in southwest corner. Once I submit this, two things are going to happen. That review task automatically gets created, sent to head agronomist. Review task automatically gets created, and it gets dropped in my calendar seven days from now. So when that seven days rolls around, I'm going to see this task sitting in my inbox or on my calendar with this note as a reminder for myself to, to check the southwest corner. So that's what will happen. So I just kick that process off, and now those tasks have, have been generated. A couple of things I'll show on the mobile side here before we, we move on is if I if I go and complete either a planting or harvesting task, there's a slightly different uh, interface here. So, for example, I'm going to click on my planting task. And in my case, instead of I can go to the field if I want, like I did before, and I could do anything here that I wanted or see the details. But in my case, in, in this scenario, I just want to complete this and say, yes, I planted this field. So I'll click that check mark. It pops this dialog box up and I can indicate my plant date. And so I will put that in and click OK. It's completed that task, so it's out of my list, but it's also inputted that as a true planting date in Farm QA. And the reason I bring that up is because I think there's true value back into my intro where as an agronomist, you perhaps have a struggle with getting information from the grower about what was planted and when. What you can do with this task functionality is you can create, you can bulk create a task. Let me actually go back and do this. So let's just come back here and say every spring, I want to get planting information from my growers on every field. So what you can do for, let's say, Minnesota farms in my case, is choose just those fields. And I can mass select all the fields 
create a planting task and assign them to the owner of the farm, or you can leave it unassigned. But what that will do is it will fill their to-do list in the spring with a task per field that they own. And then as they complete those tasks, it will prompt them to input the planting date. And then that will be set for you automatically as an agronomist. And so that's a way that you can more or less use Farm QA as a communication pipeline to the growers to get that information out with it being very simple on their side as far as what to do. The other thing is if there's multiple owners of the farm, let's say it's myself and my brother, we own our farm. And so as an agronomist, I don't wanna assign this to Andy or Ben. You can leave that unassigned and then both brothers will be able to kind of pick up and complete those as needed, complete the task. And, and everything I just said does pertain to harvest as well. And so as a, but maybe I've been using the scenario of agronomist, but let's say you're a co-op or a, a better yet, a, yeah, beet co-op, whatever it may be, and you wanna see harvest timing and progress, you can create harvest tasks for all the fields. And then the, the growers can be entering that in. So once I, once I click harvest, this is the dialogue that appears. And so I could say, well, I, I harvested this field, I'll put it sometime in the future. And I can put in uh, my yield amount, which is optional, so you don't have to do this. And you can choose to put it in as a per acre or a field total, and you can choose your units. And so this will default based on your crop settings. But let's say in this field, uh, I got maybe 225 bushels. So I'll set harvest date. And now as, as a grower, I have that log of saying, hey, so I harvested, here's my yield amount. As an agronomist, you see that as well. The, the interesting thing with that is, let's say both a grower and agronomist are using the platform, that harvest event can then uh, flow through into a, a soil sampling event. And so it's a way to, as soon as they click harvest, you can trigger yourself as an agronomist to go out and sample that field as a separate task and uh, complete that process efficiently in a timely manner. So those are two things I would call with the, the plant and harvest task. Uh, we talked about sampling. The, the other thing I would mention here is that as an admin, I can jump into viewing all my tasks. And so to do that, I can filter. And now all of a sudden I'm seeing all the tasks from all my agronomists, or for I should say for all my scouts, maybe it's a junior scout or if you've got a full team, and this is where, if I go back into the filters, it might make sense to group this by who it's assigned to. And now I can see those, it's assigned to Ben, it's all grouped together. Down here, there's Benjamin. And so what the reason I bring this up is, let's say you know that, that Ben's swamped today and you need to assign these fields to somebody else that has a little bit more capacity. From the app, you can click on those, edit, and change who they're assigned to. And then now that is uh, accomplished and that new user has that task in their to-do list. So there's some on-the-fly ability to adjust that. The, the last thing I'll call out on the mobile side for now is that this plus button, this allows you to create tasks on the fly. So you click on that button, you see all these task options that we just uh, showed on the web view. But this is a scenario, let's say, where a girl calls you up and says, Ben, I need you to, to do a zone sampling collection for me as soon as possible. So me as a head agronomist, I choose that task type. I indicate a zone field. I indicate that this is the field that needs to be collected. I can define my points for mobile. And what I'll do in this case is I can reuse my same points from last season. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna define those. I'm gonna set my sample depth as we did before. Uh, so it, the point here is that it's really the same interface but on the mobile app. And so you can do everything on the phone without really ever needing the web, if that's your preference. And I'm gonna assign this to, uh, we'll say Benjamin. So I'll create this, and now I've got my task to, to go zone sample. I'm gonna go back to just Benjamin so I can see that task more clearly. And so in here, I have that zone sample field immediately available. I can jump into that field, into sampling mode, see those points. And then as I collect, I can enter my barcode and that will be completed. So that is how that process works and just pointing out that you can create new tasks from the app and then complete them. So they're, you're kind of fully uh, functional from the mobile side. Jumping over to the web, 
So a couple things that I'll call out here is going back in this work tab. So we've now got the process. We've created a bunch of tasks. We're using this as a team. A couple things that, that may be of value to you as an individual or as an admin, the task list. So by default, you see all the tasks that are created and exist in your account. If I click on all data, you can see we have some canned save views. So think of these like different tabs in an Excel format. So if I click on this, this is all the completed work that we've done to date. If I come into current work, this is anything that's outstanding that still needs to be accomplished. But what I want to point out here is a couple things. So you can take some bulk actions from this view. So current work, let's say you wanted to reassign all these five fields to a different individual. You can do that through this bulk process of just multi-selecting and choosing somebody. You can bulk delete. You can mark these as completed uh, from this view. You can also do a couple of things. You can do groupings here. So similar to the app, but this is just a list view where you can group by priority. So here's my high, medium, low tasks. You can group by who created the task, who it's assigned to, and the task type, the type being planting, harvesting, scouting, et cetera. The, the other thing I'll call out here that I think is quite valuable is you can create your new views. And so if I click on this black plus button, I'm gonna create a view that's called completed sampling. And the scenario here we'll, we'll talk through is this is a scenario where you need to bill out to your clients what you sampled and you only want to bill them after you've you've done you've been you've sampled it so what i'll point out here is that this is a new view and i'm going to choose on columns here and in this i can choose what i want to have displayed as columns so we can clean this up and say um, we just we want to have the acres we need that for the client we need to have maybe a legal description uh, we don't need notes or instructions but we need sample count and who completed it. So now my, my list here just contains those items that I chose. And um, what I'll do in this case, I'm gonna filter, or we're gonna say, I just want my sampling tasks. So we're gonna say zone sampling, and we'll take our composite and grid as well. So we can filter this. And so now we've got a list that just has those types. We can still, uh, we should be able to group by type here. And so this will be a view that you can see here's my grid sampling fields, here's my zone sampling fields, and I will save this view. So just to prove that it's saved, I'll toggle away and come back. Um, but now you can see that that's in my dropdown list as completed sampling. And so I invested the, the time up front once to create this view. And now this is always here as new tasks flow through, it's going to be in the save view. And you can export this out to Excel, for example. And then you've got Here's your raw data with all your acres. If you charge per acre, you can run a sum on this, this total down here and say, okay, well, that was all of my, my grid sampling and I charge a certain rate for that. So that is uh, an option here for saved views, but you can use that for, for anything. So you could say work by type, so not saved out by chemical application or grids or create a new one for, uh, but maybe group it by who it's assigned to. So it's a, uh, a, a workload list per user but it's saved and always easily accessible for you as a as an individual. The a couple last things here. So I mentioned that the apply task is oh sorry I meant to talk about the the daily tasks. So this is a, the same as the the list view, with the exception of it's broken down into a calendar. So the the value here a couple things is you can thumb through your weeks and say. Uh, next week, what are we doing? The current week is here. And each of these rows is a user or an individual. So you can collapse this down and say, here's my full team and see who's doing what. You can also see all the unassigned tasks. And the value in one of the values in this view is that you can see the unassigned task. We need to dispatch this. So you can drag these around and say, well, this can be done by Minnesota driver on Thursday. And he can do this one on, on Friday. And so that just edited the task, put it on a new date, and assign it to a user. You can also do the same thing to say, uh, maybe Andy wants to be out Friday, Thursday and Friday, so you can grab his task and assign them to somebody else. And now his schedule is cleared up. 
or if you're an individual and say, hey, I, I'm just not going to be able to get to this. It's just a quick way to bounce that into the next week and save that out. So convenient view there for, for uh, dispatching and reassigning, reallocating workloads. The apply task. So I mentioned that that one is unique. And the reason it's unique is that it's linked to a recommendation. So in my case, here's all my recommendations that I've written. And actually, just for the sake of this, we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to come over to the mobile side and let's just say uh, we're going to write a recommendation. I'm going to choose a handful, let's just say some barley fields here. I'm going to choose just a, a random mix here for the case of time. And so I've got water volumes, pre-harvest intervals in here, and I will submit this recommendation. So I just indicated that those barley fields need to get sprayed. The reason I did that is now if I look at my advice tab, I can see this recommendation I just wrote. So it's got the barley fields, the products, the totals, uh, the cost breakdown, if you, if you want that included. But at this point, as think of it as sitting back at headquarters, somebody's dispatching who's going to do this work. Maybe it's at a co-op level. You can choose that recommendation and schedule tasks. So this is that unique way that you get to the chemical application tasks. You can still create different task types here. So dry application, liquid application, aerial application could be three different categories, and those all three would show up here. Choosing that, you can then assign, just like before, dates, assign an individual, so maybe a Minnesota driver, and then save that out. And now that applicator is going to have their to-do list on mobile, where they're going to see their work, work list of what they need to spray and they can see the priority, the fields, navigate. Uh, one, one additional thing with that spray application task is, so right here, here's some spray application tasks. If I click on that, I have the ability to view my recommendation. So this, again, picture yourself sitting in the, the application seat uh, of, a, of a rig, and I can see, okay, well, I need to spray this field with 15 fluid ounces of a bound and five pints of Acheron and, and some affinity. So that's the way you can see that, get your product totals as part of the, the process here. Okay, so one last thing that we'll, we'll uh, start wrapping things up, but one of my favorite features with tasks is when it comes down to looking at your progress. So back on the main map view from the web, the default is coloring by crops, but if we bring out the left-hand panel and we display our different color options, so field color is default, as I mentioned. Color by task is what I want to point out here. If I turn that on, our color mode changes. And what this is representing, let me get into a season that has more data. What this is representing, in my case, is the scouting task is what I have selected. So what this means is if you look on the bottom right, you look at the legend, it shows completed pending ready. These are the different states of the fields. And so this means that the, the red fields are ready to be, to be scouted. They're kind of outstanding. The green fields are completed. So you know that those have already been scouted. Yellow means pending or orange means pending <coughs> in this case. And all it means is that field needs to be scouted, um, but it's not past the start date. So, so don't check that field yet, but it's gonna be upcoming um, this week or in the future. The, a couple of things, like if you didn't want that pending in there, you can remove that. And so if I uncheck that as the a status option, now you just see completed versus ready. You can also turn everything off and just get a completed map. And so a scenario here is, let's think through a, a planting progress map or a harvest progress map. You could turn on the planting or harvesting uh, task, which I don't have a lot built out for that. Let's see if I get any more in 2023. Yeah, not really. So let's just say that this this task in this case was a, a planting task. You can see everything in here has been planted. Everything that's green has been planted. And so going back to you've got an army of growers using the software. They're putting in their plant dates. You can get this view of saying, okay, I need to do, I need to do staging uh, or maybe emergence assessments in soybeans. And so you can see which fields have been planted, and kind of go about your plan of attack that way. The, the other big use case there is around soil sampling. You can see your, your progress on what needs to be sampled with these different color codes. And so that would be a way to sit down on a Monday morning, look at your sampling team to say, okay, uh, 
anything in red, we, we're ready to go, head that direction, and you can dispatch and divide and conquer. The And then I also, I think I built out a couple examples here for, for a spray applicator. Well, you, there you go, you can see what they need to spray, uh, what's been completed, what hasn't been done. So let's say you're, you're uh, maybe a secretary with a co-op and somebody calls and says, is my field done yet? You can, you can look at this progress map and get a very simplified view of what has or hasn't been done. And then you could screenshot this, you could print this out and have it as a report. So with that, I know this was a half hour webinar and I've, I've gone long. And so I think I'm going to wrap things up again. Work or tasks is a, an add on feature, meaning that it is an additional cost. We would love to hear feedback if, if there's anything additional that would add value to an individual when it comes to tasks. We, we would uh, like to get that feedback, but if you want to trial this, let me know. Um, we can certainly get that set up for free for a period of time. And with that, we're going to turn it over to questions. So let me get back. I think I have a slide here showing how you can. There you go. So here's the how you get to Q&A through Microsoft Teams. There's just the, the chat icon at the top right shown here. Type in your, your questions. As far as uh, upcoming events, we have we're going to keep doing additional webinars now that we're getting into the season. So we have our next one being on analytics. We've done a fair amount of work updating that and adding some new functionality around what can be done in analytics. So please check that out. That's August 1st, uh, 2 p.m. Central Time. You can see contact information here. So support or look at our blog for uh, previous webinars. And then my contact information is at the top. So with that, I'm going to take a look at the chat. If there's questions, we're going to take those one at a time. If not, appreciate you joining. And if anybody has any individual questions they want to ask me direct, feel free to reach out with this contact information.